Spotify shortly. There we go. We are. We are live. We're live. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to our regular Thursday hangout. If you're new here, my name is Nick. This is my wife, Andrea. Um, and we're resellers. We sell stuff. You can see you're in my office currently. There's stuff everywhere. We buy stuff, mainly secondhand, but some new stuff. And we sell it online. And that's how we earn a living. Yeah. And we're here on YouTube chatting about reselling. And on Thursday, we, we like to get other resellers on and hear their story and hear how they run their business. So who have we got today? Well, today we have Sparrow's End, um, who is Mel. So hello, Mel. Hello. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Good, good. Now, we've had the pleasure of meeting. Well, you guys have met a couple of times now, yeah, haven't you? We have. Yeah. And we met the once up in, I can't remember even where we were. Where were we? Very St. Edmunds. Very St. Edmunds, yeah. yeah. Yes. So we are live. Um, there is a live side chat. So if you do want to pop in, if you've got any questions for Mel, we'll try and keep an eye on that yeah, and we'll get on to those. Um, I'm just going to say a few hellos before we get started. Goodness, Adrian um, was in first. Tonight. Adrian was first. Hello, Adrian. Good to see you. Um, Peter and Gary, uh, Paul and Lou, uh, Ashley. Ashley, I'm your greatest fan is his name. That's a new one. <laughs> Is it just trying to get me to that, say that? That's for everybody, <laughs> whatever life he's in. <laughs> okay. He's everyone's greatest fan. Uh, Richard Payne is in. Oh, we saw Richard last weekend, didn't we? Ads, ads is in. Ads is Hi, in. Ads. <laughs> uh, good to see you. We were only talking about you a minute ago, Ads. Your live earlier was fascinating. Uh, Margaret, lots and lots of people. So do pop in and say hello. If you've got any questions, yeah. it's easier for us to spot them if you put question in capitals, and then we might be able to spot it. And oh, Christine out. is in and it's Peter's birthday tomorrow. Happy birthday, Peter. Peter Ray? Yeah. Fantastic. Happy birthday, an early one. Right, I'm going to scroll past. Sorry if we're not saying hello. If we've missed any questions, put them back in again. So where do you want to start? Yeah. So, yeah, we just wanted to um, talk to you about what you do and um, get to know you a little bit. I mean, lots of people know you already, but there are lots of people that don't. So um, you've been reselling for about a year now um what did i write down in my my questions <laughs> <laughs> well, as a well, sort of how, how did you get into reselling how did you find it and what was the impetus to start reselling on ebay um i quit my job and um, i quit it earlier than i was planning to i had always decided that i was going to take a break around the age of 40 and either retrain and do something else or possibly go back into teaching afterwards. But circumstances led to me doing that a little bit earlier than I had planned. And I suddenly saw myself looking at this year of rest and relaxation, which was wonderful, but I also thought actually I could take the opportunity to start something during that year as well. And I had this idea that I was gonna do a massive decluttering of my house, as you do. And I ended up with a mammoth pile of stuff to sell. And I'd sold things previously on eBay before, just on and off throughout the year. And I thought, I wonder if there's some special techniques I can learn where I can do this a lot better than just chucking some stuff on auction. And did what everyone does, headed to YouTube, ended up seeing loads and loads of different videos about how to, um, how to sell on eBay. But after a couple of sort of videos I suddenly realized that people weren't just decluttering that they were buying to sell and it just it intrigued me and I thought well, this could be a quick way of getting some money in um which actually for me it wasn't because I was very very bad at it to start with but I just kept going with it and it just kind of developed from there really yeah yeah you touched on there because you have a YouTube channel, which we've linked below. Yeah. And the fascinating thing, I've been watching you pretty much from the beginning and dipping in and out. And it's great. You yeah. just said there, you openly said that you don't think you were great at it at the beginning. Okay. But the wonderful thing is that you've documented that. And I think your channel is yeah. fantastic. There's so many people that follow us that perhaps can't relate to the point we're at, how long the length of time we've been doing this. But so many people have found your channel and related to the fact that you're you're making all the mistakes everyone makes when they start. Yeah. You're learning and you're very honest and open about that. And I think that's a credit to you and your mm -hmm. channel. And I think a lot of people have uh, enjoyed seeing that cliche journey thing, you know, yes. but it, it, it really has been a yeah. journey. And, and where you are now is so far from where you were a year or so ago. Well, yeah, I mean, 
when I first started, I was all over the place and I was picking up everything that I saw in videos. I didn't even pay attention to how old the videos were that I was watching, which I think is a common mistake people make. Um, you know, I was buying up charity shops left, right and centre, anything that I thought might sell, um, I bought. And then once I started calculating how much profit I would get from certain items that I was picking up, I then realised that actually when you pay £3 for something and sell it for 10 you don't actually get a huge amount of profit. So I learned so much probably in the first six months, I think. And I put it out there for everyone, warts and all. And there were a lot of warts to begin with, lots and lots of things going wrong. And to my amazement, like you said, people seem to respond to that in a way that I couldn't even imagine, really. Yeah. So because you were putting it out there on YouTube as you were going, do you think that it really helped you um, with then people commenting and giving you advice along the way and the community getting involved with your videos? Um, the community has been incredible. That's been a major plus. I've made so many friends. Um, I've had so much support, so much kindness. You know, the vast majority of the comments that that people leave not all of them sadly but the vast majority of them are really positive and really helpful yeah. in terms of advice I think I've talked about this on a video before that actually the advice is really overwhelming to begin with um people sort of tell you you end up with about 12 different ways that you could do one single thing mm -hmm. and in the end I think I had to block it out and just go my own way yeah yeah, and just make the mistakes along the way and yeah. learn from the mistakes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. well, we've said so many times, there's as many different ways to run a reselling business as there are resellers, and, and everyone's techniques or things they pick up aren't going to fit for everybody else. Yeah, so and to be fair, that's where some of the, I suppose, the more negative comments have come in from people who think that I'm doing it wrong or that I should be growing it and building it and doing it full time and that was really difficult to start with I felt really guilty that I wasn't doing what everyone else was doing and then kind of realized but that's it shouldn't be like that like you said and there are so many different ways of doing this and I've just picked a way that works for me which is just it's two days a week and that's mm -hmm. it and as soon as I made that switch and as soon as I accepted that that was the best way for me to do it um the business has got better my profits have increased yeah I mean mainly we're, we're going to talk about obviously your eBay business tonight but um as you just touched on you you just work on eBay two days a week and you have other businesses that you are launching and running as well yeah. alongside that so. yeah and also trying to almost like kind of makes sparrows end more than it is at the moment at the moment it's just it's a youtube channel but i'm trying to think of ways that i can create i suppose like a little community around sparrows end because so many people um they contact me and they want to get more involved in what i'm doing and they want me to help them with what what they're doing so i've got these other things but then thanks to ebay this sparrows end I don't know what I would call it now, not a business, a project, I guess, has kind of developed as well. So there's just, yeah, there's so much has come from just doing this one thing part time. Yeah. So can I just ask them, you mentioned before that, that you left a job earlier than you expected. Mm. What is, what's the plan? Are you thinking of getting back into employment? Uh, you, you just said that you're not trying to make this a full time eBay business, but you're running other things. So what, what's your goal with it? Where are you going? Um, I don't think that I would want to go back and work in a school at the moment um, for a variety of reasons that I won't go into. Um, I, I don't have any problem with going back into employment. If I ever had to, then I would. I would love a little part time job in a bookshop or a wool shop or something like that it would suit me down to the ground a couple of shifts a week or something like that. Um, I think unlike a lot of resellers, I don't have any difficulties sort of you know working for someone else um so that i will keep my eyes open and if an opportunity came up i might go for it um but this 
last month in April was um, the first month that I've covered all of my expenses with the work that I do with eBay and YouTube. And it means that I don't have to go back now unless I really, really want to. So I can explore some of the other projects or businesses or whatever they end up being, yeah. as well as keeping going with what I'm currently doing. So it feels really strange to suddenly have all of these options and all of these things in front of me that I don't even know what's going to happen with them yet. And that is that is very different from being in employment because you have a set path and I was working my way along it. And suddenly it's not this straight, narrow path in front of me. It's this wide open space. Yeah. That like yeah. a world of opportunity yeah. in well, front of you. Exactly. There's so yeah, many yeah. avenues it's you can take with, with making money for yourself from home. Yeah. It, it can be yes. bewildering yeah. to think, what am I going to concentrate on? And, and we've been through that over the yeah. years, yeah. trying to decide what you're good at, what you enjoy, enjoy and where you're going to put your focus. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to go back a bit. You said um, that you're covering your expenses. Some people who maybe don't follow your channel, um, you, you have a partner who works, is that right? So you, yes, you so have I'll, that as a backup as well. Yeah, well, um, I contribute 50% of the household expenses. What I probably should mention is that I had um, saved and planned for taking the year out. So I had enough money to live off my savings for um, that year. And that was savings specifically allocated to that gap year, not taking money from kind of other savings and investments and things. So I'd planned for it, but because of eBay, as every month was passing, I was having to take less and less out of my savings. So it's, I mean, it's it, it's a miracle. It's left me with quite a big chunk of what I had saved up. And now moving forward, I don't even have to touch the rest of it at all. Um, but yeah, I, I contribute 50% to the um, household expenses. And obviously I have my personal ones. And I started a budgeting sort of strand to Sparrow's end as well so that I could get into that a lot more because as well as being open with the eBay business I actually really think it's helpful for people if you're open with money if you're happy to do that yeah can we well, I just thought yeah. um before we let the chat go miles and miles away <laughs> okay. before looking at it I've seen a couple of questions go past so we'll dip in there and then I know you've got some other bits to chat on um so um Oh, that one says question two. I'm going backwards. Holly is in. Hi, Holly. Thea says, this is question two. Do you think the clothes <laughs> reselling market is flooded on eBay? Oh, interesting. One. <laughs> uh, not at all, um, because I'm still making money from it. And lots of other people are as well. And if you do your research properly, which is, again, something that I've only probably been doing seriously for the last three or four months, then there's always new brands coming out. There's always new things to find. And I, I genuinely don't think it's saturated at all. You might find certain brands are within women's clothing, mm -hmm. um, but there's also shoes, there's men's clothing. There's just such a variety of stuff out there. And that's what's amazing about reselling as well is, you know, I started off with, I think, a bit of everything and didn't really like selling clothes and shoes and then suddenly I've ended up with 70% clothes and shoes and about 30% books and toys and things like that and oh we've lost her oh oh no what oh, no, I'm back oh, again no back. someone was trying to ring me I forgot to switch the uh my phone oh. to airplane mode okay. um, We're still <laughs> but yeah so whatever it is that you're into so um you know I buy a few vintage ceramics and things like that whatever you love you find it easy to learn about it and then you can go out and find things and I don't think there's so much stuff out there and I don't think anything can become saturated really. No. I don't think so either and I think also that trends change all the time um, yeah. yeah you know whereas one particular brand might be really popular and selling really well right now in a, six months down the line it's changed and another brand is is the one that everyone's after you know it's um well, i think knowledge it, it comes down to knowledge exactly. and adapting and moving yeah. on and like you said if you fall into the trap of just watching videos from a few years ago and saying this is how i'm going to make money things evolve so quickly we're talking about online retail it just mm -hmm. it just moves and evolves yeah so you have to certainly keep up with it so let's yeah, see if we can do. find question one from holly 
Um, oh, there's, there's one a, from Tom. There's one from Tom. Do you want to um, read that? Do you think your skill set from being a teacher has helped you with your business project? Great question. That is a really very pertinent question because it's something that I have only really realized and accepted quite recently. I was very aware that when I started the YouTube channel that the talking to camera came quite sort of naturally and things like that. And that's obviously from years of being in front of an audience of some sort. So I was aware of it there, but I I wasn't aware of all the transferable skills that were coming across into business. Like um, I was talking to someone the other day about why is it that I can plan things out in three months and six months and a year and all of this type of thing. And you just think, well, you've spent a career doing that. So all of the planning, all of the organization, anything that involves communication, anything that in, involves motivating people and encouraging people, all of that, I realized quite recently, oh, that's coming from what I used to do. Yeah. I think well, anyone, I was, go on. Yeah, I was go actually going to say this earlier, but then we went to the chat, but, um, and it's something I've wanted to say to you before, actually, and haven't got round to, is that I really think that when you were saying that you might miss teaching as such, I think that what you're doing now is teaching. Yeah. You know, you're you're helping other people and with your YouTube channel and the way that, you know, you, you've grown an audience. I think that that you're showing your skills in teaching that way. And it's a real it's an outlet for you as a teacher. Yeah. There are so many different ways of teaching as well. So sometimes you can teach by being the expert and that's not what I could do with eBay at all. So sometimes you teach by, you know, showing people, setting examples, learning in front of them. And then so with eBay, that's what I've done. I mean, I was positioned as a beginner and still feel like a beginner a lot of the time. But when I start talking about, um, I suppose, planning things out and organising projects and things like that that's when I suddenly feel like I'm an expert again um so it's yeah it's different ways of teaching and the being a beginner bit was very new to me and I found that really difficult being the person on the receiving end of lots of advice and lots of people telling me to do things in certain ways mm -hmm. but I think it was really good for me actually and I think it's really good for anyone to go back to being a beginner at something so mm -hmm. um so yeah so teaching comes in many many forms yeah. yeah it's interesting to say that actually that you found that difficult to like take on other people's advice and what they were yeah. saying I suppose it's a bit like um, doctors are the worst patients yes yeah <laughs> yeah I'm used to being in yeah. charge <laughs> well I, I certainly saw the teacher coming through in you I have uh, two sisters uh, that were or still are teachers and that kind of teacher yeah. mentality and, and being very good at presenting things and explaining things, I think has helped your channel no end. And those yeah. that follow it's it, quite you know. As well. Yeah, definitely. Um, there's the other question from Holly. Uh, oh, we're talking about clothing. We were going to talk about what you pick up and what oh. you sell. It is predominantly clothing these days, which is why we're probably going to talk about that a fair bit. Um, do you wash your secondhand clothes before reselling? Asks Holly. This was question number one. I have been asked this before. Um, I sniff the clothes and see what kind of state they're in. Okay. Because when I donate clothes to a charity shop, I wash them beforehand. And I think the majority of people are like me. So what's hanging up in the charity shop, mostly is clean clothes that your average person has washed and put in a bag and taken to the shop. So most of them don't need anything at all. However, there is the odd piece that smells a bit musty or you can tell it hasn't been washed or it's got a mark on it or a stain on it. And those ones I do put through the wash. But it's not that many, actually. Yeah, I, I would completely agree with that. And I do exactly the same. You can see straight away if something needs washing or if it's got stains on it. And also, yeah, I do the sniff test. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and generally, you know, it smells like it's been washed, so I don't bother with it. So while we're on that subject, you mentioned charity shops there. Um, so sourcing wise, where do you get your stuff and, and why do you choose to source it the way you do? I it's mainly charity shops. It's probably about 70% charity shops. Um, I probably do a maybe about five percent ish retail arbitrage just if i happen to see something so for example 
um, last year I was in Accessorize and they had a 50p bin and a pound bin and I got loads of new shoes from Accessorize and 100% silk scarves that were 50p each and a pound each and things like that. Wow. Um, I know it's good I haven't listed them yet obviously because I'm, I'm surrounded by stuff <laughs> um but yeah so I pick up things like that um and then I started to buy things cheaply on eBay and then and get them for a bit and that worked well because the stock oh. comes to me um I don't do boot sales because I don't drive so it's just awkward and difficult for me to get to them but I certainly have enough stuff she says looking around her i i get plenty <laughs> well you know this because I'm you've just... been with me let's know in the chat if if you can see and hear mel because you were breaking up really bad for us then because you're on your phone aren't you i am yeah I don't know if that... let's know in the chat if if you can see and hear us okay I think we caught the gist of it yeah okay good um Right, I'm not going to go back in the chat any further. Uh, Let me go from back. Bobby Dazzler Bargain said, uh, do you get fed up with returns due to buyers trying multiple items? Um, I don't get that many. Um, when I do, I, should, I yeah, I honestly don't get that many. I'm trying to think. I probably sell between 60 and 100 items a month at the moment. And I might get one or two returns. I don't feel that anyone's ever abused yet. Um, I do get the occasional person saying that something hasn't arrived, but because I use um, my Hermes, everything is tracked and I just put the tracking number in and it gets resolved and they don't get their refund because the item has arrived. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't get loads of refunds. Yeah. Peter Ray has just said, uh, Mel's channel is on 2,998 subs. Give us, an up, <laughs> give us an update in five minutes, Pete, and I reckon we'll be there. I think so. <laughs> Two more. <laughs> um, Chelsea says, what was your family's reaction when you explained that you were leaving teaching and trying reselling or, and other projects? Brilliant question. Yeah, and your other half as well. What, yeah. what did he make um, of it? Uh, my... So on the day that I decided that I was going to resign, so the straw that broke the camel's back, I don't mind telling people, is that I requested to go down to four days a week and they said they couldn't make it work. So I said I can't make it work either <laughs> um, and uh, sort of went uh, back to my office and texted my other half and said, you know, you've been say, telling me to quit for the last year or so. Can I do it today, please? And he was just like, oh, thank goodness. Yes, go and do it now. So I did. Can I just, um, how did that feel? Because we've been there. I want to know, how did that feel in that moment? It was, I, I don't know. I'd sort of been gearing up to it for a while. I'd been mm. carrying my letter of resignation around with me for about three months because wow. I felt that it was coming soon. And then, I don't know, it was just before February half term. And I remember feeling a little bit fretful, I think, over that, that week. And then when I came back and I just sort of walked in, I just thought, oh, no, I feel relieved. Like this, this is the right decision. Um, and I had to there was a lot of begging me to stay that I had to deal with. And but I stood firm because I knew it was the right decision. Wow. And my mom, when I told my mum, she burst into tears and my stepdad got a glass of champagne out at 11 o'clock in the morning oh. because they had they saw how much it had taken out of me and how, well you you must know if you have teachers in the family it's every hour of every day almost even in the holidays mm. um and I was just exhausted and I know that my parents had been worried about me so it was celebrations all round actually so your really mum's tears were happy tears then oh yes right oh okay, yeah, okay. I thought your mum yeah, was no, devastated in Yes, no, the Lord celebrating away, your mum's crying in the door. Okay, good. <laughs> my dad did actually tell me a couple of months ago that I probably ought to go and get myself a job. And I just said, Dad, I've got a job. And then that was it. And he didn't say anything after that. So good answer. I like it. Yeah. Um oh Karin is in. Hi, Karin. Says Mel is great at encouraging and motivating. There you go. That's totally. the teacher, teacher coming out again. Totally. <laughs> I, I saw that Lisa Cotton said that she discovered eBay reselling thanks to your YouTube channel. Oh, cool. There you go. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, Lloydie asked a question. I don't know how easy that is to answer quickly, but how do you manage cash flow? Uh, <laughs> 
watch my sales videos because I have loads and loads of stuff about it in there. Okay, cool. Um, the chat just jumped. I have no idea where that question was. I've lost the thread. What, Lloydie's question. Or have you just, was that the one you just Oh, asked? we've done Chelsea. Okay, right, right. Mm -hmm. I've gone back far enough. Um, oh, Heather, oh. the treasure pirate's in. Sorry, not participating. I'm cooking dinners. Lovely to see you, Mel. Okay, Hi. good. Hi, Heather. <laughs> Um, Karen says, question, how is the organisation of the pit getting on? Well, now, you see, all of the stuff that I've said about planning and organisation, <laughs> um, I was trying to explain this to someone the other day. I'm very good at planning and organisation, but I'm exceptionally untidy. And somehow these two things have always lived together in harmony um, over an entire lifetime. The pit is shameful in places i have a rack uh, a kind of racking system here which has got everything hanging up that needs to be listed and then i've got quite a lot of listed boxes and then i have piles of mess so it's it's a mixture actually some of it's organized and some of it isn't but the more the more tidy it becomes the quicker i do all of my picking and packing and stuff in the morning so that's my incentive to keep keep sorting through it yeah, yeah it's totally. it's really not easy we battle with that oh uh, yeah completely. my office is total chaos most of the time <laughs> yeah ditto yeah. um peter ray asks okay. question do you pick up items that you're not sure about because you remember a youtuber selling it or mentioning it do you, do you go based on, I think I, I, think um, I saw somebody grab this once in a video and just pick it up. Yes. Well, that that's what I did to start with. That's what I was doing for probably the first four or five months. And then as soon as I stopped doing that, I just started making better decisions and um, more actively researched things. And I do research now that doesn't involve looking at people's videos i will go into ebay and i'll pick a category so something like i don't know women's shoes or um women's stiletto heels or women's sandals and then i'll just do completed and sold highest price and i will look through to see what brands are selling at what prices um and that that i'm afraid has worked a lot better than picking up things from um lots of videos yeah. yeah, and I would highly discourage that. <laughs> discourage Picking what? up things just because you've seen it in a video. Yeah, I think, well, it's great to be inspired and, and remember things that are worth a lot of money that you might spot. Yeah, but but you, ha would, you have to be excited about the say, thing you pick up. Yeah, I would say that because otherwise it just sits there and you don't list it. Yeah. Um, if you're not, in, you know, not inspired to list it or you don't like the particular thing. Um, but also I would always encourage to do research. Mm -hmm. on anything you know just don't pick up something blindly because you think oh somebody i saw somebody in a video had that <laughs> brand you know look it up on your phone do your research yourself i'd always definitely you know, there's, a, there's a couple of uh, good questions there trevor hicklin asks uh he says he doesn't drive and he wanted to know how you get on without driving and then also the humanized orange <laughs> great name uh, asks Mel, after a year of reselling, do you have an item of stock that is starting to feel like the elephant in the room? So. <laughs> in terms of it not selling or in terms of it not being listed, I've got, I've got maybe both. <laughs> yeah, yeah, lots of both of those. Oh, let me see. I've got a whole pile of board games, Nick, that I believe I did a video about a year ago and the vast majority of them are still on this shelving unit next to me and haven't been listed oh haven't been um, listed oh okay, okay that's fine. <laughs> I, I will do those for next christmas that you know they will get done uh, so they're a bit of an elephant in the room um and then oh things like um like those blue nose bears those little gray bears with the blue noses i think i got that from someone's five-year-old video um they're still sat in my shop um yeah there's there's a lot of those items still okay. yeah and the question that trevor asked about how do you how do you do reselling without driving i suppose you just public transport would that be it um yes i'm i'm within walking distance of the town that i live in so um i go to the charity shops once a month and um just yeah pick up what i can i always combine it with something else that i'm doing so if i'm meeting a friend for lunch then I will spend the hour beforehand just going around some charity shops and picking some things up. And then where I'm buying 
you know a certain percentage online now as well that all comes to me so that's that's really easy and I've also I've got quite a small shop haven't I I've only got about 400 ish items in it at the moment so I don't because I'm not full time, I don't need to go sourcing every day, every other day, or even every week anymore. Yeah, yeah. We, we've experienced meeting Mel and Mel um, already having a bag full when we get there. <laughs> yeah, I load up, and I mean, I, do, I mean, I'm honestly, yeah. I'm like a, a pack horse. I carry two massive bags, I fill them up, and then that's me done for a few weeks. To be fair, it's usually because I'm late. <laughs> we we are always late. Well, you, well I didn't like to say. <laughs> You can, you can, there's one thing you can bank on with us it will be late i never used to be like that until i met andrea isn't this true yeah. and then it's just oh, I know. I've, I've become a late person uh karen says i sell 99.9 percent .9 clothing and i'm just under three percent return rate that's an answer to somebody's question about what is a yeah what is a low or high return rate i don't know what our percentage Ooh, is you've hit but, the 3k mark there you go oh wonderful yeah, well done. And we're way behind in the chat. Tom says you're on 3001. Um, somebody give us another <laughs> update. Fantastic. Um, so that, yeah, congratulations on hitting 3K. That's quite an achievement That's on the lovely. channel. I know it's the it's the year anniversary of eBay and of YouTube as well. So it's nice, nice to have crossed a milestone at, at that year point yeah. as well. Timely yeah. moment. Absolutely. Yes. Oh, lots of people saying congratulations about the 3K mm -hmm. in the chat. Um, Alison Holden says, I love Mel's channel. It was the first one I found since I started selling on eBay. Mel, how does your partner feel about you selling on eBay? Does he join you in the charity shops? Um, no. <laughs> Actually, no, he occasionally comes in the charity shops, but um, gets a bit bored. He did. He's only ever found one thing for me, and that was because it was something that he wanted for himself. It was a cashmere aqua scooter blazer, but it didn't fit. So I kind of was just, that's fine. I'll buy it anyway. Um, but no, he's not He's not really interested in it as such. All he's interested in is that I'm happy um, and that I'm not stressed and working every hour God sends anymore. So yeah. Um, so yeah, he's really happy that I'm doing it. Apart from the piles of, I do like tap creep. I don't know if anyone else has tap creep everywhere in their house. It's just yeah. piles. And I've managed to completely <laughs> clear the downstairs um, of, um, of, of, but there's still quite a lot in obviously this whole room here and there's some in the main bedroom. So that's not so great. But other than that, he's fully supportive. Yeah, of I did notice that, that now you've moved your desk and you, you do your Insta stories and stuff. Um, it always looks so much tidier behind you. Like before you used to have yes, stuff on the table yeah. and yeah. it looks yeah. really quite nice now. <laughs> I miss it. it yeah, the dining room table creep, used to be covered in stuff. What yeah. is oh, did we lose Mel? Oh, no, you're back. Oh, okay, tap creep, is that a thing? What? Yeah, when things creep into places they shouldn't be. Oh, God, we yes. We get that all the time. Oh, I'm with you now. Right, tap <laughs> yeah. creep. Yeah, I'll use that one. That's a good one. If we go um, out to a boot cellar, whatever, sometimes bags end up in oh, the living it, room. It ends up in the living room and I get told. Stay there for a while. <laughs> yeah, I'm bad for that. Um, right, quick answer. Uh, Lisa asks, if you had someone to do one thing in your eBay process, what would it be? So if somebody could take one part of the process away for you and do it. Yeah, mm. packaging. Hate it. Okay. Yeah. I'm so in the minority. It's so boring. With packaging. I am totally in the minority. I love packaging. My favourite bit of the process. But, um... No, you can come and do mine. Then, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll come and package for you for a day and, and you can pay me in board games. <laughs> yes, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Fair exchange. Oh, Art Journey UK says only discovered Mel this morning. Watched three or four videos, and then saw Nick's announcement that she was on tonight's as tonight's guest. Fantastic. Um, oh, Shelley's in. Hi, Shelley. Right. Let's see if we've got any more questions, and I'll get further down the chat. Did you have any more bits I think on your covered list? Covered pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Um, Al's Attic has got a question. Yep. Um, have your ex-colleagues found your YouTube and reselling adventures and what do they think of the big change? Great question. Um, I don't think that many of them know about it. Probably just the ones that were in my team know about it. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I know that one of them said that she found it strange watching me on YouTube because she said, I obviously know you in one capacity 
and watching you in a different capacity in a different way was very strange for her but she was completely supportive of what I was doing in fact everyone has been I've not had any negativity from anyone that I know at all or at least nothing that they've made me aware of that's good yeah. Does it feel strange that people that you know kind of from your, your previous employment watch? Because I, yeah. I, I find it strange when friends or family watch us, even yeah. though we know thousands of people watch yeah. us, someone you know watching. Is that weird for you? Um, uh, I know everybody oh. in my personal life knows the channel or watches it. So none of my friends on a personal level, but I'm fine with my ex-work colleagues seeing it, which might sound strange but I mean my um my mum watches my channel because I mention that all the time and that's why I, I behave very well and don't swear and <laughs> things like that because she's watching <laughs> but none of my no none of my friends that are not from work watch anything yeah okay you were really breaking up again then let us know again in the chat if if you can see and hear us okay um right uh, well, well. There's a good question there from Peter Cummins. Why Sparrows <laughs> End? Is it the name of your house? Uh, no. <laughs> that would probably be a very foolish thing um, to do. No, it's um, it's a place name that I've always liked. It's um, near Saffron Walden, so it's Essex Hearts border um, sort of territory. And I do know someone who lives in that particular place, and it's a lovely place name. And it really fits with the type of thing that I'm interested in. And I think even when I started the channel, I wanted it to have a place name so that it sounded like a location. So part of me suspects that even way back then, I had an idea that something was going to come of it, but I just didn't really know what. Yeah. Julie Hall. Uh, no, Halil. Is it Halil? No, yeah. Can't. Yeah. It says, Mel, if you ever want to go to a boot sale, I'm happy to pick you up. Oh, <laughs> oh! thank you, Wendy. That's lovely. <laughs> DM me on Instagram. Um, just above, I think there was a question from Dale, which might uh, be okay. an interesting one to read. Where? Just slightly up here. There, Dale Cook. I feel your pain being a teacher. My wife is a primary teacher and I'm a secondary supply teacher. Anyway, regarding charity shops, do you get surprised by how much they charge for some clothes? Um, first of all, I just want to say that being a teacher wasn't a painful thing. Just I don't want anyone to think that I didn't absolutely adore my job. It was more uh, some management <laughs> issues in the last couple of years. Teaching itself is a oh, we love that it was my privilege to to be a part. We keep losing um, you now. Have I disappeared? Oh, I'm sorry. I think it's where I wave my arms around when I talk. <laughs> no, I think it's it's more. I need to keep the, the, still. The, yeah, we lost the, the second half of that um, sentence. Yeah. Um, you were saying that teaching itself wasn't um, the problem; it was management. Oh, are you, are you there? Yes, I'm. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm here. Um, yes. So yeah, just just that I wouldn't want anyone to have the sort of impression that I didn't absolutely. I adore my job and it was a real privilege to um to do in terms of charity shops I've only ever been to one in Cambridge that was eye eye-wateringly expensive and um there was a toast dress hanging up behind the counter and I spotted it when I was paying for something else and I said oh how much is that and she said oh it's 45 pounds and I remember standing there thinking oh my word I don't even think you could get that on or maybe even in the original toast shop um it was just ridiculous but i have access to a full range of charity shops i've got one at 99p another one that's three pounds and below i've got all of the sort of bog standard ones in between um that are around three pounds four pounds five pounds and then there's obviously things like the british heart foundation that tend to be at the upper end of the spectrum so only been surprised yeah. by one. I'm very envious of your 99p shop. <laughs> yeah, we used to have one um, near us, a town called Letchworth mm -hmm. had a, was it everything 99p or everything 199? Something yeah. like that, or maximum price was 199. It was great. Oh, it was Always yeah, found stuff there. in there. I get, I get loads of comments about that actually. And I think, first of all, 
there's not always anything decent in the 99p shop because it's the leftovers of what hasn't sold in the other um, shops in that sort of chain of charities. And you, I mean, the last one, I got 20 items and I had to go through every single thing in the whole shop to get there. And usually I don't find things that good or that many. And the other thing as well that I notice um, in comments and things that people make on those videos is I don't want people to think that they have to have a 99p shop or a really cheap charity shop to be able to resell because I sometimes get my biggest profits from items that I've paid seven pounds for, ten pounds for. And it really just does come back to that research and knowing what to pick up at the end of the day. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah if you if you know your niche and you know that you can spot yeah. a dress that's worth fifty pounds, you can pay ten or even fifteen or whatever for it, and there's yeah. still a massive chunk left. So, yeah. but it, it all comes down to knowledge and research. I'm getting so much more confident in paying a little bit more for things these days. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I pick things up in a charity shop, and you look at the yeah the I'm price, like, and you're like, are you sure? Are you sure? <laughs> You're like, yes, yes I'm paying <laughs> £10 for this or whatever. But yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, okay. I'm, you know, I'm obviously not a teacher, but having teachers in the family, I know exactly what you're saying. That, And I think that maybe that's what Dale was getting at as well, that um, the pain is more the bureaucracy and yeah. the, the paperwork and the management and everything that you have to do outside of actually teaching. I mean, the reason why... Yeah. You get into teaching is because you want to teach there's, and then there's just so much to more teach. pressure yeah. on you yeah um which well we've seen detracts it from that with my sister joe yeah. she struggled so much with the stress of the job she yeah. loves the teaching but she's struggling yeah. to concentrate on the teaching because of all the stress that comes with the job and there's a lot of support in the chat for teachers saying that they're undervalued and overworked totally uh, so a lot of people understanding where you're coming from yeah um where were we? I saw another question. That's really, really good to hear, actually, because um, quite often, I, some again, some of the negative comments that I get have been connected to um, to teaching and um, people suggesting that it was, you know, like a cushy little number and um, it's not that stressful and all of these things. And, and it's really, um, I get that's probably the only thing I get defensive about, which probably came out in what I, I just said earlier in that mm. it's such a beautiful job. It is, as far as I'm concerned, you know, the act and the art of teaching is probably one of the, the most important things that, that you can do. I mean, those of you that are parents, you teach your children. Um, and to hear people saying good things about it is so, so lovely to hear because that's not what teachers hear a lot yeah. of the time. Well, Absolutely. It's interesting as well, because of what we've done on YouTube for the last five years now, I've never, I never described myself as a teacher, but I love that our channel inspires people. Mm. And, and the fact that I've been inspiring somehow with what I've shared or what I've talked about, I love that feeling. So I can imagine getting that on a daily basis from teaching yes. yeah. must be yes. incredible. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah so there was, oh, I've lost where I was again. <laughs> well the humanized orange says um mel is it true that you recommended a tattooist to steve green to cover up the bruising and swelling on his right arm <laughs> oh yes definitely that was me <laughs> that's bizarre um karen says do you miss the sense of accomplishment um you must get when you see a child turn their life around or really get the subject from your teaching um Yes, it's probably one of the biggest things that I miss. I mean, just the the students in general, because that's where your interaction and your positive feedback came from on a daily basis. Because I, you know, I don't understand when people are being negative about teenagers because it's it's just utter rubbish. They are the most generous people that I've ever worked with, and they're full of praise for you if you help them, full of thanks. I definitely miss that, but I think. I think that was where the YouTube thing came in because when I started getting, you know, those comments from people where they were thanking me for being open or thanking me for whatever, that, I mean, it can't replace it completely because it's not quite the same thing, but it went some way to filling the gap that was left by that. 
Yeah. Definitely. Absolutely. Um, I want to take it back to reselling bit. Yep. Um, now we've touched on the fact that you you've shared kind of going into reselling or buying specifically to sell on eBay kind of cold and you've shown the ups and downs of it and, and the ins and outs of starting a business on eBay. So this channel and I'm sure your channel gets a lot of people coming in who are fresh to eBay. So looking back on what you learned in the first few months, what advice would you give someone who perhaps is watching this and thinking I'm going to give this a go if they're inspired to try looking back what would you do, do, do differently or what would you advise someone to do oh that's such a good question um i would advise them to just get started and like everyone says sell some things in your own home first because then you start to understand and the process and how it works and how to list something and I mean, I just, I started fairly tentatively. I think I, you know, I bought a few things, put them on and almost like waited until something that I had bought to resell sold before I then went out and got some more things. So I was, I was really quite tentative for like the first two or three weeks, I would say. Um, and, you know, you don't have to you don't have to do it all at once, which is what I ended up doing. You can just chip away at it every single week, add a few more things and then just kind of watch it grow. Um, but yeah, getting started and also not giving up too soon either. One of the things that I get a lot in comments on my videos is, oh, I've got, you know, I've put 30 things on, but nothing's selling. How can I get a sale? Um, and a lot of people, I think, give up at that point. But I just think you have to keep going and you have to just keep working through it and keep learning um, as you go. And And don't don't rely on input from other people too much you know go out there do your research make some decisions if they turn out wrong move on to the next thing and just try and do things better um as you kind of move through it yeah. that was very long-winded wasn't it no, no, that, was, that was a great answer <laughs> I, I, I totally um back you up on the on the just just do it thing because we get a lot of messages yeah. from people that, that are scared of ebay are scared of the process what if i get a return what if i get scammed focusing on all of the things that do crop up now and again but they're the minority yeah. and people get focused on all of this how am i going to package this what if i sell something and it breaks worrying about all the difficulties I just implore all people to jump in and find out it's not actually that scary and when these things do happen you deal with them and you get past it and you move on and then you go why was I so worried about that and getting a return or something it's part of the process so I think just jumping in with both feet trying it and learning is the best advice I think I can give oh, yeah. to anyone that's yeah. new absolutely yeah um can we scroll up and just <laughs> Yeah. Carla made a comment. Was Carla in? Yeah. Uh, Hi, Carla. Arm wrestling I'm... champion. <laughs> I don't know if I missed the question, but she said, did you not answer the fa favourite reseller question? Because it's me and you didn't want to offend Nick and Andrea. <laughs> favourite reseller? <laughs> Are we going there? What's your favourite reseller, Mel? Or who, who's your favourite channel, should we say? Who's my favourite reseller? In terms of reselling or just yeah. in terms of person? Um i i've cut down actually on the amount of videos that i was watching because i was obsessed for the first six months i think i watched anyone and everyone um and they're reselling um videos i watch oh, who do i watch the most i watch um i watch emma reseller oh yeah um and her clothing ones and i watch my good friend ads's uh videos um i watch I don't watch your live on a Sunday anymore because I can't because my other half always wants to watch a film instead. But I watch uh, your. Shocking. I'll have words with him if I ever meet him. <laughs> yeah, I think you should. Um, yeah, I just I, I dip in it. I tell you which one I do probably watch the most is Karen's packaging video on a Monday morning because it's the perfect timing when I'm doing my packaging and it, it fits into my routine really, really well. So, um, and I've learned loads from Karen as well, actually, um, over the last uh, year. So um, that one I'm, I'm kind of watching fairly regularly, I would say, but it, yeah, it, I still it watch is, quite a lot. Well, I echo what you said before, because 
like you when when we started doing it and channels were popping up i i felt almost obliged to watch every channel yeah. and every uk reseller going and then over time and now i i couldn't even tell you all the channels there are i certainly can't watch them all no. and you just have to gravitate towards people that you you know you feel yeah. a kinship with or that you enjoy the content and that's fine that's because we and cannot... also and i don't know if this is um true for anyone else but i find that when I sort of I've become friends with people away from YouTube and kind of in real life and it almost means that I watch their videos less because I have contact with them in a different way so I don't necessarily watch their videos because I'm chatting to them on Instagram or or something else yeah it's interesting how it evolves I mean we've, we've got a bunch of people we talk to regularly and yeah it's interesting you don't feel the need to perhaps watch yeah. find out what they're up to because you know anyway <laughs> Yes, um, exactly. The obligation isn't there. Yeah. Uh, Constant K says, uh, I honestly don't know how you have time to buy and sell and also run a YouTube channel. It's a lot of work, I'll be honest. It can yeah. be a lot of work. And your videos are so edited and a lot of inserts and this, that and the other. You take a lot of care with your production. <laughs> so, some of them are like Okay, them, some. Yeah. some. <laughs> um right i'm going to scroll down to the end we're rapidly approaching the hour we, we try and keep these to roughly yeah. an hour um so i'm going to ask the the burning question of um how do you see your business moving forward how do you want to see it evolve and do you have any plans um i it needs to grow a little bit more but not loads at the moment i am managing um, sort of 400 items in my shop really really easily in those two days and I want to try and find the, the sweet spot in terms of maxing out my time on those two days being really efficient I think it's going to come in around 600 to 800 listings and um, so in terms of size of shop that's probably as big as it's going to get um, I want to or I'm starting to We've talked about this, Andrew, anyway, and I'm starting to try and make it more sustainable in terms of the packaging and things that I use. And when I get to the end of something, I'm trying to find a replacement that's more sustainable. So that's something that's sort of happening for the next 12 months. Um, yeah. And really, really we just doubling down that. on my that's, that's something that we're, we're trying to do as well, isn't it? Trying to find sustainable packaging. Yeah, we want to find a supplier of, of that and hopefully, yeah. Yeah, trying to move away from bubble wrap or yes. um, plastic poly bags yeah. that kind of thing. So, um, yeah. Somebody wants you to do a, a video of a garden tour. Just uh, just putting that out there. Uh, so that's one for the future. <laughs> that is going to go on the other channel, I think. <laughs> um okay well i think just in case start... anyone wants to know uh what's the name of your other channel oh um it's uh woolly Will... truffle there'll be there's links underneath my videos to the second um channel anyway and that's um it was going to be crochet but now it's just going to incorporate any kind of creative stuff yeah. <laughs> that i get up to apparently the ebay poly bags are 100 percent recycled yeah, recyclable that's if people recycle but them. are they biodegradable no and most recyclable. people don't most people don't think to recycle this sort of thing yeah it just goes in the bin mm. um but yeah we're, we're trying to find a supply of, of biodegradable um ones yeah okay i think we managed to keep up with the chat for once and, and answered it. most of the questions <laughs> So I have put links below to, to Mel's channel. Uh, I know a bunch of you have already gone over and subbed. We, we've got you to the to the 3,000 mark, which is fantastic. Um, so on. I just feel aware that I um, kind of butted in what Mel was saying about her plans for the future. And I'm not sure if you finished what you were saying, did oh. you? <laughs> um, I, I think I did. <laughs> I can't remember anything else I was going to say. So. Okay. Um, but yeah, please go over and check out Mel's channel. Uh, you have a website as well. The, the address for that is below and Instagram, all those good things. If you're watching this after the fact, um, please put a comment below, maybe put more questions. I don't know if Mel will have time to come back and answer those, but yeah, let us know what you thought of the video. Check out the channel. And it just remains to thank everybody who asked questions and who is watching live. And to thank you for joining us, Mel. I hope that wasn't too painful.
No, it was really good. Thank you. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. So thanks for watching. We'll be back on Sunday. Are we? Oh, we're going to a book sale. Oh, that's going to be good. Oh, yeah. There's a so, very, there's a question yeah. that's just come in actually from oh, okay. Panos. We can do one more. Sog um, said, other than business side of things, what is what is it in reselling that is so intriguing and exciting to you? Yeah, let's end that's on that. That's a good that's question a great to end question. on. Did I say intriguing yeah. and exciting? <laughs> I am, um, for me, it's the, it's not so much the, it's not so much the reselling itself I don't think it's the flexibility it's the fact that you can shape it and mold it to fit exactly what works for you and it's it's a very democratic job or work in that it, it, it anyone can do it and I mean that in a positive way anyone can do it and anyone can take it and make it exactly what works for them yeah absolutely yeah well, that's so. a great great one to end that on. is a great one to end on okay so well, yeah as you said links to instagram mail's website and the youtube your youtube video video <laughs> channel <laughs> are below, are below. <laughs> yes. and um karen has just reminded me that um, we have seller ladies live tomorrow and i think it's on our channel it's on here is it yeah i'm not very prepared about it but um yes yeah. Somebody was asking before, we, you mentioned, uh, Mel, that you watch Karen doing her Monday packaging. Whoever asked that, it mm -hmm. is Karen Sells Clothes. You can click on Karen's link in the side chat and yeah. go over and sub to Karen as well. Great channel. Yeah. Right, we're going to wrap this up. Thank you so much, Mel. Really enjoyed that. And thanks, everyone, for joining us. Yep, thanks, everyone. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye.